Hey everyone, it's Game Dev with Drew, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. This is going to be my only Godot 3D video for the entire month, because I still need to learn a lot of more things about it, but I do have the basic character controller down. So, let's get straight into it. Let's make a new project. Name it. Uh, learning, uh, let's name it Game Dev with Drew. 3D. We will now browse. We'll make the folder and we will create and edit. Now, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to create an empty room. So we're going to press 3D scene, rename it to uh, room. Don't make fun of my Boston accent. And then I will add a new static body in here. The static body will then have a child node of a mesh instance, as well as a child node of a collision shape, not polygon. With the mesh instance, we're going to give it a cube mesh, and we're also going to give the collision shape a box shape. Now we can transform this to our liking, but I like to make the Y.1 to make it like a nice floor. And we can just make the scale 20 by 20 to make a nice little area that we can walk around once we create our character. I'm also going to give this thing a little uh, material. So we're going to make a new uh, spatial material, give it a little color, and change the albedo to green. Because you know what? Make it a little metallic. We'll also give it a little bit of roughness so that it looks like a little more like a uh, weird and then we'll uh, and that's it for the material for now Let's save this make a new folder called scenes because we like to keep our code very organized and now we'll make a another folder called scripts we're going to now make a new uh, scene, and we're going to make an other node called a kinematic body. This kinematic body is going to be very uh, useful because it's literally our player. Under the kinematic body, we're going to give it a, another mesh instance, and we're going to give it a nice capsule mesh. You can see that the capsule mesh is a little lopsided, so let's give it a rotation degrees of 90 degrees on the x-axis. See, I'll show you this right now. The x-axis is this way, the y-axis is this way, and the z-axis is this way. So, that's how you know uh, we're, what we're doing for the code. Next, we're gonna add a collision uh, shape, and we're also going to make this a capsule. And we're also going to flip the capsule on its 90 degrees x-axis. Next, we're going to make a spatial, just a normal spatial, and we're going to rename it to our head because I like to have um, everything under the head because that's what most people do for FPS. I'll then add a child node for camera. And then I will gladly move this guy up so the camera can be seen just a little bit. We'll now save this as as our player. And let's just throw in our player for right, right here. Let's add him in and then let's save this and press play. Select current. And we can see that we can see our entire um, little thing. Now, let's press X, and I'm going to go into the player and make a new um, script. 
we're going to put the script inside of scripts. Now that we're in here, we're going to set a couple of different parameters. We're going to give ourselves a speed, which we're just going to make it 10. We're going to make an, uh, we're going to make a var for gravity and we're going to make our gravity very realistic and we're going to make it 9.8 because 9.8 meters a second squared is real life gravity and then we're going to make a jump variable uh for our jump obviously and it's going to be uh we'll make it seven now we'll also add in a our camera acceleration And we're going to make that uh, 50. And then we're going to make our var uh, for sensitivity. So we'll just call it sense. And we'll make it a uh, 0.1. Because that's pretty cool. And then we're going to make a, another var called snap. By the way, I'm following a, I'm following a little guide that I wrote for myself. Um... After I'm after I followed a couple of YouTube videos, but I feel like the YouTube videos were a little um, not helpful, so I just I'm doing them now. Uh, I'm making the video more helpful because it's uh, say I'm making this video now because I feel like this was much easier uh, to understand if I did it. We'll now make a lot of different variables called direction which is going to be a vector 3 because a vector 3 is x, y, and z x going forward and backward, y back and forth and all that stuff, all that nice jazz we're going to make our velocity var vel equals vector 3 which is going to be empty we're going to do var gravity vector equals vector 3 and finally, we're going to do var movement equals vector 3. And now, with our on ready vars, we're going to make an on ready var for our head, which is just going to be our dollar sign for our head. And we're going to make an on ready var for our camera, which is just going to be dollar sign camera. Now we're going to make it so we can look around. Now we're going to make it so now we are going to make it so we can look around. So we're going to use this cool funk input event. We're going to pass it and now I'm going to show you what it's like to do some weird moving around with your mouse. See basically An FPS controller is very difficult, and we're going to need a lot of different functions to work around this. So, let's start with this. If our event is input mouse motion, which is kind of intuitive, we're going to rotate our Y in degrees to radians because we want it to be in degrees and we're going to make it a negative event dot relative dot x the reason why it's relative dot x is because you're looking up and down which is what our x and y is because I'll show you it right now remember how I showed you x our x rotation is like this remember that which actually means we're looking up and down, which is technically y. So this is the y-axis, but we're turning on our x-axis. It's kind of weird, but you'll you'll understand it eventually. And then with this negative relative event dot x, we're just going to multiply it by our sensitivity. Next, we're going to rotate our head dot rotate our Next, we're going to rotate our head. Next, we're going to rotate our head with head dot rotate underscore x degrees to radians again, and we're going to do negative event dot relative 
dot y times sense. So if we're going to rotate our x, we're going to lo look left and right. But in reality, we're turning on our y axis, which is uh, essentially looking left and right. It's weird. I under I know. It's it's so weird. Next, we're going to make our head dot rotation dot x equivalent to a clamp. The clamp is basically making it so we can we can't look in a specific direction. So and we don't want our and we don't want our camera to turn 360 degrees when we look left and right and up and down and stuff like that. So we're going to clamp our head dot rotation dot x in degrees to radians negative 89 negative 90 and degrees to radians 90. So with that we're just going to go into our game and see that we can look around now. But you can see that my mouse gets taken off the screen and we can't really do anything about it. So instead of doing all this stuff we're going to make a new function ready and we're just gonna say input dot set underscore mouse underscore mode very big mouthful and we're just gonna do input dot mouse mode captured now we can go into our game and it captures our mouse and we can just look around we can look up and we can look down but we don't go all the way around because we clamp it in order to leave the game, we're going to have to Alt-Tab and then close the game right here, or you can Alt-F4. Next, we're going to get into the big part. See how much code there already is just for simple player movement? It's kind of crazy. So, into the mouthful. We're going to do func underscore physics process like normal when we're doing some physics processing. First, we're going to make our direction equivalent to vector th vector 3 dot 0 next we're going to make three new variables we're going to make our var horizontal rot which is also known as rotation and we're going to make this equivalent to our global underscore transform uh, dot basis dot get euler dot y this just makes it our horizontal rotation sort of like smoother but we're also getting the transform basis of euler's equation with the y it it's weird i don't it i can't really explain it but we're just making it smoother to look left and right i'll tell you that next we're going to do our var forward input so we're just going to do forward input equals input dot get underscore action strength and now we're going to make four new and now we're going to make five new actions so we're going to go into project settings input map we're going to move forward move back move left move right and jump respectively. Now with move forward, we're going to press key W, move back key S, move left key A, move right key D, and jump, which is just going to be space. Now we're going to get the action strength of our move backward, and we're going to subtract it by input dot get underscore action strength for move forward what this does is basically make it so that our movement is sort of like better i can't really explain it until i get into the game but this is going to be useful for mostly um controllers because you're getting the action strength to make it like you're seeing if you're holding it down more and more now let's do that for the left and right so var horizontal input equals input dot get underscore action strength move right 
not UI accept, move, move right, subtracted by, subtracted by input dot get underscore action underscore strength, move left. Next, we're going to write direction equals vector three horizontal input then zero, then our forward input. The reason why we're doing this is because our horizontal input is going to be our x-axis, our y-axis. We're not going anywhere in our y-axis because that's weird if we are. And then our forward input, because that's it. And then we're going to r rotate it, basically. And then we're going to make it our vector 3 dot up. And then our, and then our horizontal rotation and then we're going to normalize that all next we're going to do jumping so with the jump we're, we we just know if is on floor if you've watched my previous tutorials we're going to set our snap equivalent to the negative of get underscore floor underscore normal. Basically what this is setting is our um, the snap of the top of our uh, of our bodies, which is basically um, right here. We're just looking at the top and we're trying to get this, this as our snap rotation because we're going to be moving with move in slide with snap because we want it to make it much smoother. Now we're going to set our gravity vector equivalent to vector 3.0. The reason why we're setting this to vector 3.0 is because we don't want any gravity upon us. Next, we're going to make an else statement. And with this else statement, we're going to make our snap our equivalent to our vector 3 dot down. The reason why we're going to do vector 3 dot down is because our snap is below us. So that's all we need to know. And we're also going to set our gravity vector equivalent to vector. Uh, we're going to make it plus equals vector 3 dot down times gravity times delta. The reason why we're adding it is because we want our character to fall down because gravity. And finally, with our jump, we're going to do an if input dot is underscore action underscore just pressed jump and is on floor. We're going to make our snap equivalent to vector 3.0 again just so that we know we're in the air. And then we're going to set our gravity vector equivalent to vector 3 dot up multiplied by jump. That's basically all it. But remember, we need to do one more thing, which is linear interpolation and slide and move and slide with snap. So we're going to make it move now. We're going to set our vel equivalent to vel dot linear interpolate. We're going to make our direction times speed and our and our delta. Next, we're going to do our movement equivalent to vel plus gravity vector. And finally, we're just going to move and slide with snap, movement, snap, and vector three dot up. Now, when we go into our game, we're going to see that we can look around, move forward, look, move around, move forward that way, and we glide a little bit, but that's okay. We can now jump and that's really all there is that I need to show you guys for today. 
this was a lot of work. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I learned uh, Godot 3D in a couple of days, and I needed to get this out because, you know, I saw that there weren't many 3D tutorials. But this is going to be my one and only 3D tutorial for the next coming weeks. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.